Welcome to Wine Wanderings. Today I have Dr. Bob Young, MD, um, co-owner of Bending Branch Winery in the Texas Hill Country in Comfort, Texas. Welcome, Dr. Bob. Thank you, Tricia. It's really exciting uh, to be with you today. Thank you. I've enjoyed so much my three visits to your winery. You really know how to hold a great wine tasting and your annual Kentucky Derby party is legendary. I know last year in 2020, of course, everyone had challenges, but you did many virtual tastings as well. So, and I wanna tell our readers a little bit about your background. Um, as, as a background on Dr. Bob and Bending Branch, they're making wine from some outstanding grape varieties full of antioxidants. And Dr. Bob was drawn to the beauty and legacy of the wine regions of Europe and South America and the US. And as a physician, he found the art and science of winemaking intriguing, as well as increasing research regarding red wine's impact on health. He progressed from a course in viticulture and enology to a property search in the Texas Hill Country near where his daughter, Allison, was starting a family. And he enrolled in the rigorous winemaking certification program at the University of California at Davis, an international leader in winemaker academics and research. He and his wife, Brenda, founded Bending Branch Winery in 2009. Nine, and along the way, the Bending Branch wines have won numerous international wine awards, and the winery was voted best winery for the sixth consecutive year in the San Antonio Express News Reader's Choice Awards. He's had enormous success with Tanat grapes and also Tempranilla, Sangratino, Malbec, Pickpull, Morved, among others, grape varieties. Dr. Bob became a 2009 Raynaud Society inductee, and he's a member of the American Society of Enology and Viticulture and the Texas Wine and Grape Growers Association, as am I. As a Phi Beta Kappa, Dr. Young holds a bachelor's degree in chemistry, a doctor of medicine, a master's degree in public health and healthcare administration, and is boarded in preventive medicine. He serves on the board of directors of the Comfort Area Foundation. That's quite a background, Dr. Bob. You know, recently I wrote a, a newsletter on wine wanderings, on wine and health, and you responded back to me. Tell us what you were doing with your wines today in the analysis of polyphenols, antioxidants, and resveratrol properties. Well, Tricia, thank you for that great introduction and also thank you for doing that wonderful article I, I found it um, you know very very informative and good good to have a comprehensive review of wine wine and health out there um, the discussion of antioxidants resveratrol prosanidins and you know the discussion about some of the health quote healthiest wines uh, tonight sagrantino etc and and the points that were made about Increased maceration times uh, tend to be one of the factors that uh, enables more more of those polyphenols to be extracted. Um, but here at uh, Bending Branch uh, in Comfort, Texas, um, I started on a path before we actually bought the property in 2009, and that path was um, uh, chartered by uh, Roger Corder, who's who's now a good friend of mine. I, as a physician, I was always reading, you know, lots of medical literature and I got interested in the impact of wine on, on cardiovascular health and otherwise. And I came across this article that was published in Nature in 2006 by Dr. Corder, and where he demonstrated that a chemical in red wine called procyanidin um, had a positive effect on the vascular system. And so, of course, that uh, piqued my, my interest. Then he followed up that a year later with the pub publication of his book, The Red Wine Diet. And I really dug into that. And, um, you know, it's probably one of the most dog-eared books that, that I have <laughs> and one of the most underlined books. So it's just full of great information about, about uh, red wine and uh, impact on, on health. 
and I highly recommend it to um, to your followers to to get a copy of it. Uh, I got so interested in it that um, at a Renault Society conference in Walla Walla, Washington, in 2008, uh, I decided to attend, and one of the speakers was Dr. Corder. And he gave a brilliant presentation um, of the research that he had done um, on the impact of pro-cyanidins. Pro and so I said, you know, why not try to make wines that are high in polyphenols and high in pro-cyanidins and have that kind of be one of the features of uh, bending branch wines. Um, I'm a physician, um, you know, I've been involved in public health. It just seemed like the right thing to do. So um, all of this background with Roger had, had a terrific impact on some of the initial varieties that we decided to plant on the estate. Um, I chose varieties, that, um, uh, most of them mentioned in his book that, that were high in, in polyphenols and tannins, anthocyanins, the color compounds and, and procyanidins. And these were Tanat, um, Malbec, uh, Sagrantino, Cabernet, Sauvignon to, uh, to name four. Um, so my goal was to produce, you know, really high quality red, red wines from Texas fruit, but to produce ones that had high levels of these procyanidins. So I set about trying to figure out how to do that. Now, as you know, there's some controversy and debate in the literature about resveratrol versus procyanidins. Resveratrol obviously is a really, really great chemical that has some positive impacts. The question is, is there enough of it in high enough concentrations uh, that it, uh, in, in red wine that if you have one or two glasses a day, will that really make an impact? However, procyanidins are in much, much higher concentrations. And at least Roger Corder's uh, theory is that uh, they might be more impactful on cardiovascular health than resveratrol. So that's one of the reasons I decided to focus on the procyanidin side of things. So to talk about Texas a little bit, we're in a very, very hot climate. And what I learned early on is that the grapes, when they grow here in most years, um, the sugar maturity happens early, or the or as winemaker in wine speak, the bricks um, uh, become mature early. But the phenolics, the the tannins and the polyphenols and the color compounds and 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 all those, they're delayed, uh, so they're not phenolically mature. So more often than not. The grapes, the red grapes here uh, out of necessity because of the sugar level get picked before they're phenolically mature. So that means if you do a traditional fermentation um, that you're not going to get the highest levels of, um, of polyphenols extracted from the fruit. So put on my science hat and said, uh, you know, how do we how do we deal with that? What's the solution? Well, the solution I came up with was uh, going back to what you talked about in your article, um, maceration techniques, is to try some new maceration techniques. So when we first started making wine, um, I, I would do research side-by-side -side fermentations of um, what I call regular fermentation, which is actually uh, open top, half ton um, bins that are hand punched down. It's kind of the old traditional way of, of making making wine hands-on. And I would compare the results of that with the other maceration techniques. And the other, the other two maceration techniques that we use, uh, one of them, and if you'll put the first slide up, is called cryomaceration. I learned about cryomaceration uh, in my studies at UC Davis when I was trying to you know, learn maceration techniques to increase extraction. And uh, I found a paper that was is now probably 15 to 20 years old that was published in France in the French medical literature and where they took Cabernet, Cabernet uh, Franc, I think, and, um, and Merlot, and they, they froze some of the fruit um, and then they did their regular fermentations and they compared the results of the polyphenols and the tannins and the color compounds. And they found, um, 
roughly a 50% increase in the cryomaceration um, test group compared to the regular controls. So we started doing that here. And this is just a picture of, uh, you know, a uh, half ton, uh, you can't see the bins, but this um, is the surface of a, a bin that's been in the freezer uh, for several weeks um, and frozen. And what, what happens here, we think, is the ice crystals that slowly develop during the freezing process, they break open the, the cells in the skin and uh, cause an, an increase uh, uh, leaching out, if you will, of the polyphenols. So uh, when we make this wine in this way, we, we uh, thaw it out first, and then we, we make it and ferment it exactly the same way. And our results in, in earlier studies done here at Bending Branch, we got 25 to 50% increase uh, overall in polyphenols using that method. The, the second method that we use um, is um, not that well known, but it's actually available all over the world and it's called flash detente. And would you put up that slide, please? Flash detente um, is a process that's over 20 years old now. And it used, it's, um, you know, this is the piece of equipment here that, that we use. We have the only one here in Texas. And it uses um, rapid heating to 185 degrees Fahrenheit of the, of the grapes and then rapid cooling uh, in a vacuum down to about 90 degrees. And the heating weakens the cell walls of, of the skins. And when it hits the vacuum chamber and cools off, then, then basically the, the cells explode. They open up. And also the vacuoles inside the cytoplasm um, open up. And you literally get, in our research, um, over about five years here, on average, we get about 100% increase in the release of polyphenols. So this was our solution, or two solutions to, you know, if, if you aren't phenolically mature in the growing process, then you use the winemaking process to, uh, to solve that problem, to get, to get those uh, chemicals out. And, and just not only from, uh, you know, the discussion of the health side of things, but just from point of view of making bold red wines that are gonna be well-structured and that can age well and, and keep their fruit well and, and have good color, you have to have those, those polyphenols extracted to do that. Um, so the next thing I want, want to show is uh, just to kind of double check our results, um, I decided to send uh, 18 of our wines, different wines, different vintages, different varieties, uh, using some different uh, maceration techniques to Dr. Corder and his lab. So we, we sent him, um, you know, a case and a half uh, in December 2019, just before the pandemic was about to kick off. And he read, ran them all in his lab. And we got some really exciting results out of it. And if you would put up the third slide now. So um, uh, all credit goes to Roger Corder for, for these slides um, that, that he put together for us uh, and thank him for giving us permission to use them. Um, so this is comparison. Um, actually, I wanted to do the, the other one first, Tricia, if you don't mind. Can you do that? Or, or should I just change directions? There are you. You want this one or do you want the one with the different varieties? This one, this one yeah. So did you have the right one? Okay. Yeah, I think I did. Oh, okay. So yeah, the second one. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Sorry for the confusion, my, my fault. Um, so this, um, there, there's two charts here and these are comparison of wines from Bending Branch to a previous history of analyses that he has done in his lab from wines from all over the world. 
And just to explain these charts a little bit, because if you're not used to these charts, you're going to say, what does this mean? Well, each little red dot is a single line that's been analyzed for either total polyphenols uh, on the left or in the, on the right side for OPCs, which is another name for procyanidins, oligomeric uh, procyanidins. And they're in milligrams per liter. Um, and if you look, let's start on the left and look at Cabernet. Uh, these are, this is all his Cabernets in his database. And you can see there's solid areas in the middle. Uh, looks a little bit like a grape cluster, doesn't it? <laughs> Anyway, there's so many wines tested that, you know, they overlap and, and you get that solid center. And then if you look over on the right side of that slide uh, or that chart, you'll see that Tanat, he's analyzed a lot of Tanats um, and it has the same effect. Um, on the other hand, if you go back to Malbec, you can almost see every single circle that he has tested. Um, and um, and pretty much the, uh, the same, uh, same thing for Sagrantino. So looking at polyphenols on the left first, um, we only had two cabs in, this, in the sample. I'd like to send them, send them more, um, but you can see um, how, how the level of polyphenols in those two cabs fared. Um, uh, one one uh, up at the top there was one of the, you know, it looks like the second highest one in his, uh, in his um, database. Uh, if you go over to Malbec um, and, um, and compare a bending branch Malbecs, we had, we had three samples and you can see they're all pretty much at the high, high end and one of them looks like it's, it's the highest also. And these were all, all three of those samples uh, from Malbec were, were uh, flash they taught. Uh, on the Sagrantino, uh, you can see um, we had four, four of those that were tested and um, two of those four, you know, were very, very high compared to the others um, there. And also it looks like we had the highest, highest one. And that one, by the way, was a, is a 2018 that, that we haven't bottled yet. Uh, that, was, that was grown, um, grown here. All these are grown in, in Texas. So Dr. Bob? I'm going to in interrupt you because Sagrantino is one of my absolute favorite grape varieties. So when you bottle that, you reserve one for me, please. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll do that. Sagrantino, uh, I haven't worked with it in many years yet, but um, it, um, it seems uh, to struggle a little bit to grow as well as we'd like. Here and it may be that we just haven't found the right microclimate here in Texas. I mean, we're we're getting good grapes, but but um, you know, I think I think they uh, could could improve and grow better. Um, then on, on Tanat, of course, Tanat is um, we're we're kind of known as the Tanat House in Texas. We grow and produce all kinds of Tanats, uh, from red wines to to rosés, to frizzantes, to ports, you name it, uh, we use to not for it. Um, and I'm really, really uh, was excited to see that our level of, of, um, of polyphenols and, and most of these were high too. And I'm gonna go, there's a, another slide we'll get to in a minute uh, that shows more detail about Tanat and I'll talk more about that when we get there. Um, on the far right is the procyanidins, and these, these again are the, the chemicals that uh, uh, Dr. Corder uh, found that, you know, uh, had the uh, vascular uh, improvement. Um, and it turns out that they blo actually block an enzyme in arteries and veins that, that may, may be a mechanism of action of how this actually, actually works. So, my goal is, you know, let's try to get as much of these procyanidins in our fruit or in our wines as possible. Um, so again, if you look at first Cabernet, you can see that um, one of ours was, um, you know, the second highest in, in OPCs. And that was uh, 2016 Newsom Vineyard Mal uh, Cabernet that we used flash detente on. Um, if you go over to Malbec, you can see our, uh, the OPCs on, on our Malbecs were all three very high. 
Um, again, the, uh, the 2016 um, Newsom flash was the top one. Um, the second highest one was uh, 2019 Leahy Vineyard flash detente. Then moving over to Sagrantino, um, the results are very, very high on the procyanidins. Uh, you can see that that the OP we have two OPCs that are look like the highest compared to his his database. Um, I can tell you from tasting these Sagrantinos that they take they have to be aged a little bit longer than anything else. Um, we can't turn them out quite as fast because they they're so loaded loaded with um, with uh, polyphenols. Uh, then with Tanat, um, the um, you can see that the top four of ours um, are among the highest. Uh, actually, we had two out of the three highest in in procyanidins, uh, and he's tested a lot of a lot of uh, Tanats. Uh, the interesting thing is that the that the top four circles uh, of ours are uh, flash detente. The the next five are cryo maceration and the bottom two are you know basically the control method which is the uh, regular fermentation process so you get kind of an increasing um, extraction going from regular to cryo and then then to uh, flash detente okay let's go to the next slide and um, this is a Comparison of Tanats uh, from Bending Branch with uh, from his database with wines from Southwest France, uh, which is where Tanat originated from, and um, you know lots of the early interest in, in Tanat came from uh, because the um, the, the um, people in Gers and Southwest France um, uh, reported in Dr. Corder's book that they had twice as many. Um, men that live past 90 years of age uh, than the average across, you know, the rest of France. So there's an association there, not a cause and effect, but it's an interesting association because they drink, they drink mostly Tanat wines there. And Uruguay, uh, the national grape there is Tanat. I think about 40% of everything they grow is Tanat and they make a lot of them. And you can see the profiles of, of uh, the polyphenols on the left there uh, from uh, the Uruguayan Tanats. And then you see on the far right is the Bending Branch Tanats. And, and again, the top four um, on uh, the Bending Branch wines uh, were all flash detente. The, the next five were cryos. And then the last two was, were the regular fermentation. So, um, Moving finally over to the uh, procyanidins, uh, comparatively speaking, um, which I'm most excited about. Uh, again, we've got the, uh, the Mataran, um, Southwest France on the left. Um, and you can see in general, those are, are higher in, in procyanidins than the Uruguayan Tanats. And, um, Compared to, um, to ours, um, we've got some pretty good results there, particularly with, with the flash detente, which again is the top four circles on there. Um, and it looks like we've got you know two out of the three highest uh, in his database uh, on procyanidins. So um, the very, um, the second highest one and the, the top two there are about the same as you can see, but the one on the left is a 2000, 18 uh, Newsom uh, Tanat, which we're getting ready to bottle. And I just, um, I just pulled a, uh, some out of the, the barrel and this is what it looks like. And you would say, wow, that must be really tough to drink, but actually it's quite, it's quite uh, smooth. The, um, the interesting thing is uh, in the world of tannins, the procyanidins, not only the potential health effect, but also they're the smoothest tasting um, tannins to the mouthfeel. So um, that's all a good thing. I love these slides and congratulations on your results. Thank you. 
So Dr. Bob, on thank you for going over, you know, your research. I know it's continuing and the Dr. Quarter's um, results. Tell us just a couple more things. Coming out of the pandemic, what will you be doing anything different in 2021? Um, well, we're starting to open up. I mean, we've been very, very um, um, conservative uh, from a public health perspective out here. And we were totally shut down for a long time. And the only way people could get wines was to you know, drive by a pickup. And um, then the next stage, which was uh, you know, a couple of months or so ago, we, we opened up outside, but we still had you know, people were wearing masks and were spread out, um, good social uh, distancing. And we use ozone and UVC light to you know, clean the inside areas. And that, actually, we didn't, we didn't let uh, customers inside. So to be the safest, we're doing only outside. So we're, uh, we're opening up even more now, which is really exciting to see people back out here. We had our first wine dinner uh, on Saturday last weekend, which was you know amazing to be able to do that again with people. Uh, we're gonna be starting to do our events. Uh, we have a pie party coming up. And of course, next year, we hope to do the Derby, the Derby event that you, uh, you mentioned. Uh, we're also hopeful this year that we're going to have a new variety. It's not, it's not um, a red wine. It's, um, it's a white wine, but it's also from Southwest France. It's a very aromatic, uh, fragrant um, uh, white wine um, called Petite Mansang. Um, oh. So excited about that. It uh, has very high acidity, which is good in Texas because of the heat. And... Um, so we'll we'll see. Hopefully, we'll get our first crop of that. Uh, we also have a, a new red variety that we're experimenting with called uh, Crimson Cabernet, and it's growing here on the, the estate. We're growing it organically, and uh, it's resistant to Pierce's disease, which is um, you know a perennial problem uh, here in in South Texas. So it's um, it's a cross between Cabernet Sauvignon and and Norton. So um, we're excited about that to see what kind of uh, results we can, we can get, get with that new variety. We'll have our first harvest this year. Well, you have quite a bit going on in 2021, don't you? So I'm going to conclude our interview, but I want to ask you one more thing. What's your favorite quote about wine? Uh, I would say my favorite one, particularly given our discussion today, is that Wine is the most healthful and most hygienic of beverages, Louis Pasteur. And of course, he, he's the guy who, who did all the magic in, in uh, helping us understand how fermentation works. So that's all quite appropriate. And interestingly enough, he, he was also a pioneer with vaccination. So I can't think of a better person to quote than Louis Pasteur. Yeah, we, we're, we're all very grateful to him for his very early research. But Dr. Bob, thank you so much for joining us on Wine Wanderings. You're so welcome. This was a lot of fun. I so appreciate you having me. Here's